Good morning. We welcome you here this morning to Trinity United Methodist Church in Blythewood, South Carolina. We welcome you in person and those of you who are worshiping with us online this morning. Thank you for being here. We want to take a moment this morning and say thank you to all of our veterans who have served in the military throughout the years. We will be doing something at the end of the service to honor and recognize you um, some more, but we just want to take a moment and say thank you. Last Sunday, our youth were not here. They were with Sean. Yep. Come and let you get called out. They were with Sean and others up at Asbury Hills being the praise band for a conference-wide youth retreat called Immerse. And they did a fantastic job. Everybody had a wonderful time. We are so proud and glad that our youth were able to help share the light of Christ. We also celebrate the walk that we did for LLS as we have held our lanterns high to spread the light. For those of you who came, thank you so much for our journey two laps around the State House. Some announcements this morning. If you are visiting with us, there is a Connect card in your um, pew if you would like to fill it out and to know more about our church. Christmas is coming, and that means the Christmas parade is also coming. It'll be Sunday. December 10th at 2 p.m. And we have an opportunity to connect with our neighbors. And then, so we hope that you and your group will think of creative ways to help out in the Blythewood Community Parade. It goes on two sides of our campus. It's a massive event. It's going to be a wonderful time. We'd love to be able to connect with folks. Maybe it's just giving out hot cocoa or a bottle of water or something simple. Or even jing ringing jingle bells as they go by. Advent is coming, and we are thrilled about it. It is on its way. And one of the things we are doing this Advent season is uh, throughout Advent, we will be using Mark Rowell's book, Experiencing Christmas, The Sights and Sounds of Advent. And we are offering small group opportunities for you to participate. Maybe your Sunday school class would like to participate. The M Monday morning women's group, I know Melanie said the handbells are going to do it. I'm going to be teaching a class on Sunday nights. It kicks off uh, the first Sunday of December, December 3rd. Uh, my class will be at the residence of Bob and Pamela Wood. And yes, I am biased towards my class because we will have food. So I can guarantee that. I cannot guarantee food at the other ones. But we hope that you will experience Christmas with us as we use this book for Advent time. And finally, yes, Advent is a great time of the year to bring friends and family, and we have so many wonderful Advent events happening. We're going to have carols and cocoa happening. We will have, on um, December 17th, the choir will do a Christmas cantata. We will have Christmas Eve services, including candlelight service. So as we busily rush into the holiday season, let us take a moment to breathe and prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Light of Christ, awaken us this hour to the glory of your presence in our midst. Shine among us in such a way that the darkness would be pushed back so that we might truly see what is real so that we might be able to see the light. Empower us to move from darkness to light, from sin to new life. May your light within us shine through into worship this day as all days. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
standing as we continue our worship with a responsive greeting printed in the bulletin or on the screen, your part is in bold. Are we awake? Are we alert? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Are you watching the signs? Are you interpreting what is happening today? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Do you see the opportunities for ministry? Do you see the poor, the homeless, the hungry, the needy? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Come, let us worship. Let us work in the reign of God. Christ has extended the invitation. Let us work together in the reign of God on earth. Please be seated. Now join me in the prayer for illumination in your bulletin and on the screen. Let us pray together. O Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth and faith and love and strength to follow on the path you set before us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7, which is also printed in your bulletin and on the screen. We will read this responsibly. Again, your part is in bold. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in prayer. I will utter dark things from old. Things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not fight for you. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children. But the next generation the children and rise up and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and living of these words.
right, keep your lamps trimmed. That was a jam choir. I like that. All right, kids, it's time for uh, children's moments. Come on down. If you're a kid, if you're a kid at heart, come on down. Let's spend a couple of minutes together. Hi, how are you? Good. Good morning. Hello. Hello. How are we this morning? Everybody good? All right. So I think we all know what this is, right? Flashlight. A flashlight. That's right. These are pretty helpful. They're pretty important, aren't they? I mean, if there's like a storm or something and the lights go out in the house, is anybody ever scared of the dark? It can be a little scary. It's okay. Yeah, for sure. Like, because we just can't see what's out there. I'm like, what is going on? That's, you know what? I, I was talking to Miss Bonnie this morning. There was a time I was out in the woods by myself in the dark, and there was an angry bear there with me. It's a true story. Angry bear in the dark with me by myself. I know. It's crazy. And I didn't have a flashlight, and I couldn't see it, but I could hear it, and I could hear it growling at me. I wish I had a flashlight. Don't worry. I made it out okay. That's why I'm here. But I think flashlights are pretty fun. So I'm just going to turn this on, okay, so we can, we can use our flashlight. You ready? I won't shine in your eyes. Ready? Wait, is it working? What? Why isn't it working? There's already light. I should be able to turn it on, though, even though there's light. You know what? I for Exactly. I forgot the batteries. You know what? We're in luck. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> I got a battery. So I'm going to put this in. All right. I think I'm flashlight certified. I can do this. Here we go. All right. Let's see if it'll work out. Does it work? Okay. Oop. Maybe not. Yes, it worked. So I guess it's important to have batteries in my flashlight. Oh, man. I'll remember next time. So today, there's a story that we're going to hear about Jesus and he, he tells this story about people who had oil in their lamps and some people who didn't have enough oil for the lamps. Now, putting oil in, in your lamp back in those days, they didn't have flashlights, but they, they had lamps that they could put oil in and it would burn and they could see, right? It was like a big candle. And so I think what's important for us to remember sometimes is that, that Jesus says that we're like that too, that we get to be light for other people, just like this flashlight shines around, we get to be light that shines in other people's lives. And he's telling us that, that we can have that light inside us too. We need to make sure we got our batteries in, right? And so our batteries sometimes are those things like remembering how much God loves us and how much God loves other people and that we carry Jesus with us wherever we go, that we get to shine that light around. But we got to remember to keep our batteries in, huh? I'll remember next time. All right. Good job. Let's pray, and then you all can go to Children's Church. So will you all repeat after me? Ready? Okay. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your light. Help us shine your light. Amen. All right. Great job, everybody. You can go to Children's Church. We'll see you later. places you could be, Trinity United Methodist Church in Blythewood is where you are this morning, whether here in person or online, it's good to, to have you here today. I want to talk a little bit about last week. What we talked about last week is we, we looked at the idea of how we can navigate the challenges in our life. And we all have challenges. We all have things that are in our way that, that slow us down, that hold us up. So how do we deal with those challenges? Um, there's uncertainties and there's difficulties. I hope maybe if you heard the sermon last week, you've thought about how you're able to navigate those. Um, sometimes we do those well. Sometimes we don't do those so well. Uh, what we also learn is that we also don't do it by ourselves, but we need help along the way. Um, the way forward is not the way that we've always done it, but it is a new way and a way that Jesus taught us. It's actually not a new way, it's an old way. <laughs> it's from the Beatitudes, remember? We talked about blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, 
Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. It's not so much about our actions, but this is who we should be. We should be and live this way each and every day. Whether personally, whether collectively, this is as a church, this is how we should be. This is how our society, we need to teach our society how to live. And, and, and the world would be a much better place, but we end up kind of going off and, and doing our own thing, right? It seems like it's reckless when we live this way because the world goes, no, you're supposed to be full of power and might. But Jesus says you're to actually be humble and meek and a peacemaker. Now, this week, we're going to look at a scripture that kind of continues that theme and idea of how we're to be. And it comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It's the 25th chapter. I'll have a stand as I read today's Gospel lesson. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. And all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So I'll start with a question, as I often do. Where is there light in your life and the world today? Where is there light in your life and the world today? Think about that. And where is there darkness in your life and the world today? So where is there light and where is there darkness? We can name those. We, we, we know what those are. We can name some things. There's some things that we can't quite name because we might not be so sure. So what do you see when you look at the lamp of your own life? You know, Sean talked about the flashlight, right? It needed to have batteries in it. It wouldn't, light wouldn't turn on. So does your lamp have no oil, no batteries in it? Does it have a little bit so there's a dim light? Or is your light and your lamp shining bright? So where is your lamp? When you look at it, if you could look back at yourself, where is the lamp of your life? Is it full of oil? Is it running out? Or is it empty? Is the oil fresh? Or is it rancid? Is your lamp burning brightly? Or is it growing dimmer and dimmer and dimmer? Light or darkness, full or empty lamps, fresh or rancid oil are not about what is happening around us. There's nothing to do about that. It's not the circumstances of our life and world, but about what is happening within us. So when we look at our lamp, it's about inside of us, not all the exterior things that are happening. Right? So everything could be going all south around you. It could all be going awful, but inside your lamp can be burning bright. And you may be that one light that shines bright in the midst of darkness. It would be so easy to divide these bridesmaids in this story that Jesus tells, right? It would be very easy to divide them into two groups. They're wise and they're foolish. They are prepared and unprepared. They're good and they're bad. They're winners and losers. They're welcomed and rejected. More often than not, that's what we do to each other. If you've got light, you're over here. If you've got dark, you're over here. We're not going to deal with you in the dark. We're going to deal with these people in the light. Right? We, we divide folks all the time. To divide and categorize the bridesmaids, though, is to miss. Is to miss, I think, what Jesus is really trying to teach us. Is to ignore or misunderstand the gospel today. Because all ten bridesmaids are a part of the kingdom. 
All ten were invited to the wedding banquet. All ten went to meet the bridegroom. All ten became drowsy and fell asleep. All ten had lamps. All ten were meant, intended, and called to be carriers of the light. The only difference is that some carried light and others did not. The only difference is some carried light and others did not. Otherwise, they're the same. And that's true for each and every one of us. Some of us carry light and some of us don't carry light. And that is true for all of us. We're also meant to be carriers of light. Jesus says, you are the light of the world, earlier in Matthew. You are the light of the world, all of us. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. To withhold our light is to add darkness to the world. Now, I want us to toot our own horn a little bit because Mijin mentioned these at the beginning of the service, but I want to go back through and add one more. Last week, we talked about uh, it was All Saints Sunday. And what did we do? For those who had died, we lit candles. Right? Those who came and they remembered their loved one who had passed. My tradition is to put candles that were all up around the pulpit and there was light all around. So there was light present. You go back and look at the, the light, the night walk for the leukemia and lymphoma society that we walked. We raised over $4,000 as a church. We had 30 plus people go and walk and we held lanterns up high. We were the light walking around the state house to bring awareness to horrible diseases that some of you certainly are aware of, and somehow we are all touched by this. And then to me, the cherry on top is our youth praise team who went to Asbury Hills. They led worship for a conference youth event at, at Asbury Hills. Well over 200, up around 200 people or so were there, and they were the light of the world providing worship for these youth and adults. Our kids, remember last week I said, you raised them. These are your kids right? We're responsible. And this is what they're doing. So that's powerful. Right? And we're all able to do this because those are the gifts that God has given us. So where is your light right now? Is it bright? Is it shining? Or are we withholding our light? Or is our oil just run dry? Every day, we either add to the light of the world or we add to darkness. I know that because that's how my own life is. And that's how your life is too. We either add light or we add darkness. Listen to these. When we break relationships, we turn away from him or her, our world becomes darker. Um, it becomes darker. You know, we, we turn away from the needs and the concerns of those people around us. We lose hope in one another. We act as if there's no need of anybody else but ourselves. But when we remain open and receptive and we soften our heart, we can recommit to the idea of loving my neighbor as myself. A new light begins to shine. When we carry grudges and resentments, we nurse old offenses, we refuse another's forgiveness, we add to the darkness. But when we offer mercy and forgiveness and seek re reconciliation, we let our light shine and it shines bright. When in our marriage or other relationships, we put ourselves at the center, act as if we are the sovereign, we give priority to, to our needs and our desires and not the other person, that doesn't end well for us. We're living in a dark, dark place. You wonder why divorce rate is high? Let's be clear, friends. People don't even know what marriage is nowadays because they, they just get married just to get married. They don't know that there's no love at the center of that. And if there's not love at the center of that, there actually is no God or Christ at the center of that. Right? It's darkness. And so if you're suffering that way today, there is a way to rekindle that, to add oil to your lamp. There are ways to do that. What if we think or speak or act with violence and we deny someone else's dignity? We act with indifference to another's well-being. 
We darken the world when we do such things. But when we turn the other cheek, we work for justice, we recognize the dignity of each person as a human being, we add to the light of the world. It just becomes brighter all around. It's exactly what happens. When we get stuck in our way, is the right way or the only way? We assume we know more and better than others. We close ourselves off to truths that each of us have. Some of you have great ideas in here. And we need to be able to hear that. Whether we do them or not, I don't know whether we do those things or not. But we've got to be open to things and understand that there are, there are possibilities and ideas and truths that no one may have thought of, but someone else in the room has it. I think we need to listen to our kids. You know that, right? They're the ones who actually can see what we do wrong as adults. They'll point it out to us, right? They do. You, 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 your grandkids point it out, right? You know what I'm talking about. And your kids, well, your kids now, some of you, are, your kids are my age. So, um, um, and I've got a child, so I know that she points it out when we're not doing what we're supposed to. But when we recognize the needs of the other, we let go of our comparisons and our competition. The light shines really bright, right? And there are new possibilities that arise. So what do you see when you look at your life right now? Remember last week we talked about we can make a difference. Each one of us can change the world. Each one of us can change the world. One interaction, right? It's not about programs as a church. It's about one relationship at a time. Think about our youth praise team. How many youth did they touch last week? And all it takes is one. And that one ghost tells one more. The next one ghost tells one more. And we've reached thousands and hundreds of thousands of people over the lifetime. That's what we're talking about. It's a way of living. It's not about all the other fancy stuff that we do. And that is in our own personal life. So think about when you started your first career job, when you really started into your career, whatever that might be. And you went in as a, young, as a young buckaroo and you said, hey, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to set the world on fire. Right? How'd that go for you? Right? Didn't go too well, did it? Because someone, someone had to knock you down a couple of notches, right? Right? That's how it works. Because you can't just go in and go, I know what to do. I'm going to save the world. No, you're not. Jesus has already saved the world. We're just going to be the vessel to help everybody else kind of walk along together. You know, I learned that in ministry in my first church. Well, I know what I'm talking about. I went to seminary. I know all this stuff. And, I, and then I came to realize is, you know, I don't have to have all the answers. I don't have to have all the answers. And I don't have all the answers. And you don't either. And that's okay. And when you can, when you can take that off the plate, you realize, wow. Think as a teacher. You don't have to have all the answers for the kids. Sometimes you just need to redirect them into something else and allow them to discover and answer, right? We don't have to do it for them. We can be the light to shine it in a certain area, and they can then go off and discover it. That's probably how each of you have grown into the wonderful people you are. If people have shown you the way, and you've taken it upon yourself to go that way, and you learn from it. And now we teach and help others in that same way. So when I look at my life today, I see light. But when I look at my life today, I also see darkness. I suspect that's true for all of us because light and dark, they're, they're on the same side of the coin. They're not opposites. They're on the same side of the coin. Light reveals darkness. Darkness is an absence of light. And so we need to be light. Jesus is saying we need to be prepared. We need to be ready. We need to have our batteries, or in that day, we need to have oil in our lamp ready to go, right? The, the choir taught and sang about the, get our, keep the wicks trimmed and burning. You got to have the oil and the wick trimmed just right so that it burns for the long haul. You don't want it to burn too fast or too slow. You want it just right so that you can see where you're going and that you don't use up all the oil too fast, I don't think the question is whether there's darkness in our world today. I don't think that's the question that we need to be asking because we know that that's true. It's what are we doing about it? What are we doing about the darkness in the world? There's a lot of talking. There's a lot of talking. Man, there's too much talking. But what are people doing about it? What are we doing about it? 
Every time I live in this dark place, every time I add darkness to the world, I betray the gospel of Jesus. We betray Jesus when we do this, right? We betray ourselves, and we betray the values that we claim that we hold. When I do, I have to justify that betrayal, right? We have to justify that. Oh, well, you know, I just had a bad moment, blah, blah, blah. And, and that's true, right? There's truth to that. But, you know, sometimes we just, we just say those things just to get out of something that we know was wrong. We shouldn't have gone down that road. We blame and criticize and refuse to look at our own selves. We want to blame somebody else, right, because they deserved it. I didn't do anything wrong. I have nothing wrong with me, and we push it off. But when we claim it and say, hey, look, you know, I messed up. How much better does it work for you? It does, doesn't it? What do we tell our children? Why don't we listen to that? Just tell the truth. Just tell us the truth. And what do we do? I, mean, I told you the truth. And you have your fingers crossed, and you're like, yeah, right. You're never going to know. But as parents, we know what's going on, right? We knew what our children were doing. That means your parents knew what you were doing too, right? <laughs> when you come to that realization, you're like, oh, my gosh. Your parents knew what you were doing. Just like our parent, God does what we're doing. So just kind of keep those things in mind. So what does it look like for you today? How is your oil level? How can we make a difference in the world? How can we be a church that shines our light and not burn too bright or too dim? Not about what we do, but who we are and how we act. What, what does that say to our world? I met Friday uh, evening with an African-American pastor. He has a nonprofit uh, in the Blythewood area uh, about, for outreach. And me and a couple of other community people were talking about how we're going to reach the community. How can we make a difference in people's lives? How can we cut the red tape of all the other town and county and state and federal government pieces to get people the help that they need? And so we've begun a conversation that's going to go on for a long time. We, we put a thousand ideas on the table, but we don't, we're not sure what's going to happen yet, but those are things that are starting to bubble up. And this week there were, I, I think I could count seven different positive things that came through the office that I was just blown away by. Blown away by your generosity, blown away by your faithfulness and other actions that happened during the week. It's just unbelievable. And I was able to see that this week. Some weeks you don't get to see it. But I had a multitude of things. That tells me something's happening. That tells me that we're, we're living as the people God's called us to be, not trying to pretend to be something that we're not. Right? Because we don't have to worry about being another church. We're the church. We're Trinity. We, we don't have to be anybody else. You don't have to be anybody else but who you are. Because we love you for who you are. You don't have to be different. You don't, I don't care what kind of cars you drive or houses you live in or how much money you have. I don't, that, 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 none of that matters. It's the relationship and it's the friendships that we share. It's your families and the hard times that you go through. When you're down on your luck, you know you need somebody in this room or within our church or community or whoever you talk to to share some good news, to share a word of hope. So what does it look like, your oil level today? The world needs your light. It needs your light. You, you have too much to give. I don't want anybody in here to say that you're too old. <laughs> right? Right. No one says they're too old. Amen. There's no too old in here. I know some 90 year olds who run rings around y'all. Right? And you know them too. Right? We, we have a lot to give. And how we give it, it just depends, right? We all have different gifts. So the world needs your light. It needs you. There's not a person or a place in the world that doesn't need your light. Your light makes a difference. It pushes the darkness away and it reveals something different. The light of Christ is always within you. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Look how bright it is in here. If we turn all the lights off, 
there would still be light. And you'd say, well, yeah, Pastor, because it's coming from outside. Uh, I'm looking this way. I can see it in you, in your smiles, in your eyes, in the ways that you hold yourself, in the ways that you live. Right? That's what people see. That's what people see. So my, my challenge is to let us leave this place and face our darkness. Now, I know that that's challenging. You can't face that by yourself. You need help. We're here. You got, you got people around you. And we need to shine our light. Shine it bright. Turn it on. Blind people with it. You know those people that just walk into the room and you're like, whoa, they're big people. Like personality-wise. Right? Well, you don't have to be like that. You can walk in and just be who you are. And you're going to be bright enough. You are bright enough. You are bright enough. And in a little while, we're going to talk about people who are bright enough. Right? But you don't have to be that to be bright enough. But you can be. But you've got to be who you are. No different. I don't, I don't, I don't want you different. I don't want, no one wants us different than we are. We need to be who we are. Let our, life shine. Let our light shine. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness. Let us pray. Oh God, we are thankful for this day and this opportunity that we have to gather together to, to be your church, to live and to shine our light. We pray, oh God, that the oil in our lamps, that we have some oil. If we don't have oil, we pray, oh God, that today through this time of worship that our little, little oil has been placed in there by you, God, so that, that that wick that we've trimmed can be burning. It doesn't have to shine real bright, but as long as it's kindling, let it, let it burn. God, for those persons who are facing darkness and sense that they don't know where to turn and that they know there's no oil in their lamp, Lord, we pray a special prayer for them. And if you are in this room or you can hear my voice, Lord, there's a place and a ways to get folks a little bit more oil in their lamp. For each person, God, in this room, there's some beautiful people here, God, that shine their light day in and day out. They've worked hard and they live hard. Through the challenges and the difficulties that come, through their relationships, through the years here at Trinity and before and beyond. For the challenges of the medical and financial and relationship issues, all the other ways that we could name the challenges that come our way, God, you are present. God, you've called us as a church to to connect and to grow and serve. And those are action words, but really those are words of how we're supposed to be. We are people, we are people who connect. We connect. We work together. We're like Legos that connect to build something greater, like the stitch on a quilt, a puzzle piece in a hundred thousand dollar, hundred thousand piece puzzle, right? God, you, you, you connect us together to reveal something greater and more beautiful than even what we can see right now. For their children, their relationships of family and friends, these folks, God, are trying to be faithful. I pray that you will continue to work in their lives to be so and that you will continue to be with our church that still seeks to, to make a difference here in Blythewood in the name of Jesus the Christ. Not for our glory, but for your glory. And that we get to be a part of that. That we get to see the smiles on the kids' face when they come to our TLC, meet the parents, or when we have different events on campus. From those who are at get fit as they work out and are moving their body in a way that has, doesn't always get to be moved to our youth and children, to our choir and our small groups and our hill climbers and all the other ways that happen. God, you are just doing a new work and a new thing. And if we can just open up just a little, we can let you come in deeper 
and that light's going to shine bright. So for this day, God, we give you great thanks. We wrestle with what's going on around our world and this, the threat of war and the, the hatred and the evil that's all around us. The death that with senseless shootings and drug addiction and suicides is just over the top. But Lord, we know that you are present and we can make a difference by shining our light. For one person, All it is is for one person. When we make that difference, God, you bless that. So for this time and this day, as we look inside ourselves, how is our lamp? How is our oil? Let it burn bright today. Lord, we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's our time to profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I'll have us stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. So as we think about our lamps and we think about our light, the ways that we can do that is the, what we, we talked about in our sermon series, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. All of those things come into play as we try to reach and make disciples for the transformation of the world. Now is our opportunity to give back to God by the presentation of our tithes and offerings.
Oh God, we give these gifts back to you for they were yours before they were ours. We pray now that you multiply them in our presence so we might be the light of the world at Trinity in Blythewood and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. I alluded to, to some persons who, uh, who are full of light, and we're going to represent and recognize folks. We're going to recognize our veterans today as Veterans Day has come. Uh, these veterans are men and women who are in our communities. They are in, in our church. There are quite a number at Trinity, as you will see as the names are read off. Today is a time for us to remember and to celebrate and to shine a light on this group of men and women. It allows us to be the church that we're called to be to recognize the, the service and the sacrifice that these men and women have made on our account. And so we are thankful for that. This all came about with a conversation with the quilters who have made beautiful stars that are in these boxes that uh, uh, the veterans will receive. They're quilt, they're fabric stars that have been made, and they are quite beautiful. If you don't get a chance to see one of those, when you leave today and go out the narthex, out this door, you'll see the veterans quilt that hangs on the wall where the mirror used to be. That quilt hangs there, and the plan is, is that we will have other quilts that will hang there at different times during the year, but it's a beautiful quilt. I, I, I invite you to take a look at that as you leave. And so through this conversation with the quilters, this idea came to recognize our veterans, and so this is an opportunity for us to be able to do that today as a church and as Trinity. This service will go such that each name of our veterans by service will go service a branch at a time. Your name will be called out. If you are here, we ask that you come forward and receive a star, a box. Uh, myself and Pastor Meejan and Dave Clark will greet you here in the front. Uh, and we will shake your hand and greet you. Uh, and then you may go and return to your seat if a name is called and there's a family member of that person and you want to come and receive that star on their behalf, we invite you to come forward. And those whose names we read and are not here, we will make sure that those stars get to every veteran within our congregation. So now's the time for us to honor and to remember and to celebrate together as we shine our light. The first name on our list is Dave David Clark, U.S. Air Force. Terry Broom, U.S. Air Force. Douglas Cochran, U.S. Air Force. Terry Coyle, U.S. Air Force. Robin Doherty, U.S. Air Force. Paul Eldridge, U.S. Air Force. Jeremy Granger, 
Air National Guard. Walter Griffin, U.S. Air Force. Eugene Heiner, U.S. Air Force. Blaine Johnson, U.S. Air Force. Carl Lulamanier, Navy and Marines. Guy Lucas, U.S. Marine Corps. James Jim Payne, Marines and Navy. Franklin Pratt, U.S. Air Force. Karen Pratt, U.S. Air Force. Sean Riley, U.S. Marines, U.S. Army. Lauren Schultz, U.S. Marine Corps. Daniel Simmons, U.S. Air Force. Forrest Strigland, U.S. Air Force. David Suggs, Air National Guard. Emil Vandenberg, Army Air Corps. Steve Wall, U.S. Air Force. Now we'll transition to the other service. This is Michael Johnson, U.S. Navy. Wallace Wally Sheridan, U.S. Navy. Amanda Townsend, U.S. Navy. Steve Townsend, U.S. Navy. Al Yateman, U.S. Navy. Dorothy Baker, U.S. Army. Carrie Ballantyne, U.S. Army. Jackie Barker, Air Na Army National Guard. Brian Berrien, U.S. Army. J.B. Bishop, U.S. Army. Richard Conant, U.S. Army. Richard Dick Drager, U.S. Army. Edwin Ed Farnell, U.S. Army. Thank you, 
Hayward Gadsden, U.S. Army. Edwin Ed Garrison, U.S. Army. Matthew Garrison, U.S. Army. David Gale, Army National Guard. Steve Harden, U.S. Army. James Horton, U.S. Army. Jeffrey Huffman, U.S. Army. Joe Hughes, U.S. Army. Harrison Johnson, U.S. Army. Richard Lane, U.S. Army. Jimmy Martin, Army National Guard. Patrick McKenzie, U.S. Army. Thomas McLean, U.S. Army. Pamela McMaster, U.S. Army. Robert McMaster, U.S. Army. Lawrence Mullen, U.S. Army. David Phillips, U.S. Army. James Phillips, U.S. Army. Mitchell Schaefer, U.S. Army. William Bill Shives, U.S. Army. David Sizemore, U.S. Army Reserve. Grant Smith, U.S. Army. Jack Steen, U.S. Army. James Wren, U.S. Army. Roger Hovis, U.S. Air Force. Did we miss anyone? I mentioned him. If you'd like to come forward. Yes, come on, please, Tim. Did we get his name? Uh, Ashley and Joshua Reckman. Ashley, Ashley and Joshua Reckman, U.S. Army. Let's give them a round of applause. Let's do, thank you. These men and women, yeah. So these men and women, you can remain standing here. We're not going to have a closing hymn. I'll have a benediction and a prayer. And then we'll sing our song and, and be able to go. But we appreciate all that the men and women, our veterans here, just know that those veterans' names that were called out, we will get those stars to, to those folks. You know, if you get a chance to look at these stars, they're beautiful, handmade. Our quilters and others are starting to make those. And you're going to start to see those in other areas within our church. And it's a great way for us to shine our light, right? Because what does a star represent, right? It lights in the sky, right? It twinkles, right? It, it, it doesn't go out. And so it, 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 it's there for us to see. And so that's what we're called to be. Again, when you leave, look at the veterans quilt that hangs on the wall in the narthex. It's beautiful. It adds just that right touch of color that we need. Hopefully it'll brighten your day as you go. So here are these words. 
Go and be the light of the world that you are. Go and make a difference one person at a time and be peacemakers. So go in peace to love and serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this day and always. Amen. Amen.